What up guys, Johnny here from Ignite and coming at you with another video about the crucible in relation to form again, but even broader than form really, we're talking about something that Miller has done with this play to actually communicate his message, which is quite clever and actually was quite necessary at the time. And that is the issue of a political allegory. It's almost like the genre of the text. It's effectively the way in which Miller has conveyed his message. He has conveyed his concerns with America at the time, that is of 1950 to 1953, by actually placing the play within a setting of a much earlier era in America, but one that resembled a similar sense of paranoia and hysteria. And what I'm talking about explicitly here is the way that Miller effectively goes from the Salem Witch Trials of 1692, which was in America, just when America was kind of being colonized and people were coming over from Europe. And he basically analogizes that experience or the hysteria or an irrationality and ideological threat posed by that experience with McCarthy and the Huac hearings in 1950s, that is at the time of the Cold War, where America was becoming obsessed with eliminating any potential communist threat that might have been seeping into America and further spreading communist ideology. And by doing this, we effectively see real events of the past analogized to real events of the present. And the urgency is maintained because of the gravity of this real situation that people can understand. They can understand the lunacy behind it but he can't go directly to this context as it might not have been as well received, especially when we think about what the government would even permit to be performed as a play. We are talking about a play that was being performed for live audiences. So censorship's a big deal here, especially in the context of the Cold War. And if we're going to have a play that's basically saying the government's wrong, the system's all wrong, let's challenge it, which is what Miller is doing, he has to mask that behind an historical event that occurred something like 350 years earlier or more when we look back to 1692. So this is very interesting. So let's look a bit more at this analogy. We're talking about how in Salem at the time of 1692 in real life, this is an historical event. And whilst he does acknowledge he doesn't trace it exactly as it happened, he does his best job at doing so and adds some more dramatic elements to it. But a lot of the things in the text actually occurred or were close to being what actually occurred in real life, which is the confronting aspect of the play. So at the time in Salem, people were scared by witches. They actually believed in witches being a real threat to them. That was because a lot of the values were based on theocracy and were a very literal interpretation of the Bible at that time. And if it mentioned a witch in Leviticus, then witches were real. And when we moved to mid-1950s, people didn't believe in witches anymore. People knew that was fantastical and unreal. But communists were real. Communists are real people. They are people who possess a different way of thinking to capitalists or the people who America hoped to bring up in their country, which is people who embody a capitalist mindset. They want freedom of opportunity. They want hierarchies of power, whereas communism basically has everyone as equal, yet ironically with this concentration of power right at the top. So the point here is if you look back at it and you say, look, they're not perfect analogies because witches are fake and communists are real. Keep in mind, keep in mind that people at the time of the 17th century thought witches were just as real as people thought communists were real in the 1950s. So it actually is a perfect analogy in that respect. So when you approach the play now, consider how that allegory is functioning to enhance the meaning of the text. One, by reminding us that this is an event that has actually repeated itself. We've already been down this trap and it led to death and it led to people of vast integrity like John Proctor actually losing their life, people who wanted to defend truth. 
We don't want that to happen again. And Miller, who has lived through the 1950s, is seeing history repeat itself almost exactly. So it's a pressing message that needs to be delivered. And the fact that his audience is going to see these events take place and they're going to resonate with them quite strongly because they're going to think, this feels very familiar, although I know it's about something that happened in 1962. It's going to resonate on that visceral level within them. And then they're going to want to, or hopefully, as Miller hopes, to respond to it with an awareness of what is really going on and the dangers of it. Remember, the political allegory is used to help Miller radicalize the audience and create a revolutionary momentum in society so that they can avoid the dangers of this ideological battle that was going on. All right, guys, I hope that video helps you. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. We're going to produce a lot more of these kinds of videos. I will see you next time. And also, please share with your friends if you found that this was valuable and might be valuable to them. I'll see you later. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching once again. If you are enjoying our content and we hope you are, please do like and subscribe to our channel. And of course, share with your friends. That's right guys, thanks for watching. But please do make sure you check out our very special resources. They're quite unique. We've made a whole bunch of state rank practical guides for all your English texts out there. So check out the link now at ignitehsc.com.au. Let us know what you think. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.